All right, all right, one, two, one, two. You know how we do with your boy BQ. This is the B Side Podcast representing for the Impact Lounge, number one place to be. You already know this. Got some new opening music here because I change music like I change socks. This isn't We Own the Night, you know what I mean? This is uh, this is the Impact Lounge, and we're going to do things different and switch up the audio, switch up the visuals, all that good stuff for you guys. Going to be talking Impact Wrestling Homecoming here. Now, I get it. Impact Wrestling Homecoming was on Saturday night on Impact Plus, right? And this is Thursday morning. Definitely not uh, not the ideal time to get one of these reviews out, but this was just the time I had, so I hope that's okay with you guys. I hope you enjoy the review. I hope you enjoyed the show, Homecoming. Now, if you want to support BQ, support the Impact Lounge, you can click the link in the show notes called Buy Me a Coffee. Believe it or not, I wake up at 4.30 a.m. every single day maybe some of you guys wake up that early as well but i am definitely someone who likes to stay caffeinated so if you want to support bq uh you can click that link below so let's talk impact homecoming this was a fun show now let's talk about the aesthetics first of all because this is something that's been one of the things i've really been hammering on lately it's how the show looks the visuals of the show if you look at Hard to Kill, you can look at Rebellion. You know These are shows that I said looked like episodes of Impact and felt like episodes of Impact. Now, they've been doing a good job with some of these one-night-only shows with the, uh, you know, the backgrounds and the color choices and the background music. Because, uh, you know, I clown We Own the Night quite a bit just because I don't think melodic music works as background music. Well, I know that it doesn't. But I feel like they have better song choices. I feel like there's just better editing. I feel like there's better lighting. I just feel like the shows look better. They just sound better. They're easier for me to consume than an episode of Impact. Because those episodes, have, they just feel the same. It's the same sound effects, you know, between segments, the little video game sound they do. It's just the same shit. So this is always really a breath of fresh air for me. Now... I thought this was a good show. I think all the Impact Plus shows have been good. But I'm not just here to say it's a good show. What I felt really stood out with this, aside from the fans making the show and the fans having a good time, what stood out to me was that they brought back some of the fun. You could see the wrestlers were enjoying being there. The atmosphere was fun. The wrestlers let their hair down a little bit. Just like they used to do for the one-night-only shows. Now, don't get me wrong. Most of the one-night-only shows sucked. But there was an element of fun to them that was very, very natural. I wish I would have heard that fun with the commentary a little bit more. What I mean is, I don't think this commentary team cracks bad jokes like Josh Matthews used to do. But... Everything with the commentary just always feels like there's just a little bit of a stick up their ass, you know, like it just it's just a little uptight. It's a little scripted. Uh, You know, the D-Lo, oh, my goodness. And just what one thing that always drives me crazy with wrestling commentary is when commentary when commentators, I'm sorry, make up uh, information or they make up stories or they make up conversations. You know, this, Oh, I was talking to Ace Austin earlier today and he told me this. No, you weren't, you know, that's something that this particular commentary team does a lot. They make up a lot of shit to fill in the, the, the blanks during the matches. I was hoping with this, they were going to let loose a little bit. Kind of like if you watch AEW dark, the commentaries loose compared to the dynamite show. So I thought we would hear a little bit, a little less from them as far as just that uptight feeling that I feel that they deliver where it's kind of fake sometimes. But the wrestlers really let their hair down. And for the most part, it worked. I thought there was some bad comedy with this. And I thought there was some good comedy too. There was a lot that I thought really worked on this show. There was some stuff that I felt like it didn't work. But for the most, mar- for the most part, I give this show pretty high marks. I thought it was one of the more enjoyable Impact Plus shows they've done. And again, they captured that fun 
one night only feel where the one night only's used to have but they used to have like a little too much fun you know it was just enough to just make the show feel and look different than the weekly episode so the opening match was was the drama king Matthew Raywall and Deanna Perrazzo. So Matthew Raywall was the surprise partner, and Deanna against Alicia Edwards and Hernandez, representing BQ's favorite Swingers Palace. It's funny; many of you probably picked up on the fact that he was going to be the the surprise partner. I thought it was going to be Steve Macklin. <laughs> I just assumed it was. And then it's like, duh, this guy's the drama king. She said, I'm going to have my king. Did I, I mean, oh my God, how how did I not see this coming? Good Lord. Now, the matches from top to bottom, I thought were laid out really well. Now, Homecoming was a mixed tag team tournament. It was really intergender wrestling. It wasn't mixed tag. It was intergender wrestling. But I thought, I've used this, this term a lot the last few weeks. I thought it was done very tastefully I thought the they laid out whoever laid out these matches just did a good job of having the women and the men interact without being stupid about it like Alicia was not crawling on her hands and knees and going under Matthew Raywall's legs you know what I mean they weren't doing that that kind of crap so it was it was very tastefully laid out to where they didn't do too much intergender, but they did enough to make it make sense and work and fit within the flow of the match. I was concerned there was going to be a lot of bad comedy on this show. And there was some bad comedy, don't get me wrong. But this opener let me know, okay, this is going to be a good show. This is going to be fun. Matthew Raywall and Deanna again against Alicia and Hernandez. I've said this about Alicia before. Many times people say, well, she can't wrestle. But she's always delivered as a as a jobber that's the problem we've only seen her wrestle maybe three times where the match meant something and the other one involved Davey and Angelina Love from years ago but when she was Jordan's tag team partner and they were in the tournament the tag team tournament and then this match these were the only two Alicia Edwards matches that have meant anything that we've watched and I feel like her performance when the match means something is night and day from what we normally see out of her. I really liked her ring entrance. I mean, not her ring entrance, her ring gear. I liked her attire a lot. I thought that worked for her. You guys know I'm not a Swingers Palace person. I think it's the worst part of the show by far. Uh, But it is what it is. It's clearly not going anywhere. There's things I hate. I, I say it's the worst part of the show, but it's... I can stomach it more than I can stomach some of the other stuff that happens on the show. I know that maybe it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Um, but Matthew Raywall and Deanna win this match uh, and, and move on. I think Stevie Wonder could have seen this through a brick wall that they were going to win a match. Jordan, Grace, and PD Williams took on Matt Cardone and Chelsea Green. I thought Cardone and Green should have been on the other side of the bracket, neither here nor there. The Jordan and Petey thing is another example of letting their hair down and having some fun with the show. Do I like the whole Scott Steiner gimmick for them? No, not even a little bit. I I don't enjoy it. I don't think it's that funny. I think the majority of you probably do enjoy it and find it funny. It's just not my, my cup of tea. But they made it work and fit within the flow of this match to where they were able to use those gimmicks a little bit, but it didn't take away from the match itself. These two first two matches were super enjoyable, very well laid out. They teased a lot of Canadian destroyers here. They, you know, they teased Jordan Grace doing one. They teased, uh, teased uh, Chelsea doing one. But ultimately, they, they didn't do that. They didn't, their impact's not going to beat you over the head with Canadian destroyers like AEW does. So, Matt Cardona and Chelsea Green win this thing. Now, Chelsea Green wins with the Unprettier. I have to go into a little bit of a rant here. I talked about this a little bit on the Cool Factor. This is one area that I think Impact must improve on, and it's the branding of finishers. The naming of finishers. The the types of finishers they do. But strong 
good impactful finishers help the branding of it of your show and the branding of the wrestlers and i feel like when you're watching this show you're either watching this you know the wrestlers use the same finishers i mean you've got three people who use the cutter you've got at least two who use the ddt you've got at least two who use the double stomp off the top rope uh, we've got two who use the frog splash I mean there some of these moves are so similar and then you've got you, you know you have some finishers that don't have names and then some that have names but they're derived from like WWE or something you know so the unprettier like surely Chelsea Green can come up with her own name for this and she probably does but it's the the announcers don't know what they are I don't even know if the announcers are at the tapings. I'm sure they are. But, you know, you, we know it's all post-production. So there has to be a better connection. You know, Josh Matthews used to call Kira Hogan the girl on fire for the longest time. And I, I finally, even though that gimmick had been gone for like a, for almost two years, because that was her baby face gimmick. Hottest Flame was the heel gimmick. And he would continue to call her that. And it made me just think, like, sometimes I don't think these announcers communicate with the wrestlers and it had you know i i had to put a message to impact saying hey i don't know if you guys realize josh matthews keeps using this calling her by her baby face gimmick on screen and i, he, I don't think he ever did it again after that so hopefully that message actually got through but you know again the unprettier uh you know jake something doing the black hole slam which is abyss's name i mean he doesn't have his own name for it it's the match the, again the finishers are either called that they're after named after someone else they have no name or they they just aren't memorable like i've said this before there's a, there's probably a third of the roster i don't even know what their finisher is could not tell you and that's part of part of, part of branding you know so this is an area i think they have to step it up in big time tommy dreamer and rachel ellering took on Brian Myers and his surprise partner of Missy Hyatt. Now, I didn't enjoy this. The positive I'll say about it is that it fit the uh, the gimmick of the match. I mean, it fit, it fit not the gimmick, but the story of the match. So where Sam Beal can't really get right. Um, they did grab someone from Tommy Dreamer's past. And then it was, again, that one night only type of humor. Now, Missy, Missy Hyatt in the past has been super negative about TNA. I mean, she has called them TNA when they weren't TNA anymore and always calling them broke on social media, calling them trash. Uh, So very weird person to bring aboard. And she said very positive things about it after, but I don't know how much she even paid attention to the product beforehand. So maybe now she sees it's not trash, but just a weird person to bring on. The humor fit fit within the match, though. I mean, I get it. I just, I want to see more from Brian Myers. I called this on the cool factor and I can't believe they actually did it. I was like, at some point, Sam Beal is going to use the notepad as a weapon. And he sure enough hit Tommy Dreamer on the head with it and it did absolutely nothing. And that was hilarious to me because I thought it would be hilarious and I thought it came off funny. Tommy Dreamer and Rachel came out, came out dressed like the Legion of Doom I don't really get the whole dressing like Dusty Rhodes and dressing like wrestlers. I, I mean, I guess that's his thing. You guys you guys know I don't enjoy Tommy Dreamer on my screen. I thought this spot could have been better used for someone that needed the TV time. Like a Jake something. So I didn't really care for the match. It wasn't funny to me. Uh, they win with the Doom, Doomsday device and they move on. There's this interview after the match where... Missy Hyatt tells them, like, she's trying to, like, really lay into these guys and to Beal and Myers and says, you know what all these guys I used to manage had? Originality. Like, what kind of freaking diss was that? That meant absolutely nothing. Decay took on Fala and Flava. I didn't like this match. Okay, so the first two two matches I really enjoyed. The third one I didn't really care for. This one I just didn't like. I was watching a, a clip of Decay the other day on YouTube when they were interacting with Jimmy Havoc. This is a completely different team. 
Um, cr- Crazy Steve is pretty close to who he was. And then Black Taurus and Hammock, they're, Havoc, they're not comedy, you know. But Rosemary's character is so different now. And I thought there was too much comedy in this. When I grew up watching wrestling, and I, I get it, that's a completely different era. But there were comedy wrestlers. But their comedy and their gimmick didn't dictate the match. You know, like say there was Doink the Clown. And I don't mean the dark Doink the Clown. I mean when they ruined his character. And he was a baby face. He would come out and do his clown shit. But if he, if he was wrestling, um, you know, the Macho King, or he was wrestling, who I don't think he was the king at that point. He might have been Macho Man. If he was wrestling Macho Man, if he was wrestling DiBiase, like one of these guys that was most serious, they would kick the shit out of him. Like there might have been, you know, 30 seconds of comedy to start off the match, and then they, they would get the shit kicked out of him. And the difference is that although I kind of, I, I do like Falaba, and I think there's value in the kind of comedy he brings. Whenever he's in a match, he seems to dictate the match. His comedy seems to take over the match. And that's when I don't really care for it. I didn't need to see Decay uh, and Falaba playing grab ass with each other. I Granted, this isn't a pay-per-view match or nothing like that. That's just not what I want to see as a fan. I didn't understand the whole bite bite his face off that was chanted throughout the night I don't know where that came from I don't have a clue in hell speaking of I don't know where it came from uh, Macklin did uh, I'm rewinding here a little bit he did attack Petey Williams after the match I don't know where that came from so there's stuff that I, there's stuff that happens where I'm like, dude, am I missing something here? Is there something that I was like on my phone when I was watching and just not paying attention? So I don't know where the bite bite the face off thing came from. I didn't I didn't particularly enjoy it, even though it was good to see the fans having fun and the fans, you know, the, the fans had a blast. And I've been talking so much for a you know I think I said at the top of the show too I've been talking so much about Impact fans not looking like they're having fun at shows I mean they had fun at this show like it was very very clear but I don't get this <laughs> I, just, I just don't but Falabot dictated this entire match and then um, I think I think Tasha Steele deserves better than that um, but Crazy Steve wins with his Tornado DDT and again I said it earlier Multiple people, multiple people, people have finishing same finishing moves. What am I stuttering now? All of a sudden, my bad. Um, but Crazy Steve has the DDT. Tommy Dreamer has the DDT. Deaner has the DDT. And uh, you know, we see we see these finishers multiple times throughout the show. It's again, this is just something that I think has to change with your company. Willie Mack took on Diener. I don't even remember this being announced. I don't know if they just made it up throughout the show. Again, maybe it's just something I missed. The match was was pretty decent. The only thing I have to say about it that just was negative, other than a DDT being, again, used for the finish, just like it was in the match before this. The only the negative thing I have to say is there's too many near falls. And that fatigues me as a viewer and I think it fatigues viewers in general because I think most of us know that matches are going to end off roll-ups and finishers and it's most likely going to be a finisher and if it's not it's going to be a roll-up so when you do too many of these near falls it's just like oh my god you know just get to the point already and I think this is an area that Impact is excellent in where this is like a big weakness of Ring of Honor and AEW like Impact is excellent about this they don't go for too many falls in matches or they don't go for too many pins and you don't have this beat you over the head with near falls I thought this took it a couple steps too far but Diener wins the match Violent by Design wins holy shit there was a uh, Matt Cardona and Chelsea Green they took on Deanna and Matt Raywall uh, you know two teams that had advanced and I'm not going to go too much in the detail about matches that we already saw. Not, I mean, teams that we already saw. But this one here I thought should have been the last match of the show. Not the, Maybe not the show, but of the tournament. I would have preferred to see this as the finals. I thought Chelsea really stood out tonight. Not tonight. Um, 
well yeah tonight with the show here watching what i think leaving this show i want to see this goes back to earlier in the night i think i want to see Ch- a, a program between chelsea and jordan i think that's what i left this whole show thinking wow i think they can do something really special together i thought there was a lot of chemistry there Watching this match, I feel like they want to go Chelsea and Deanna sooner than later. But I would rather see Chelsea and Jordan do something meaningful first. And then Chelsea can move into a program with Deanna. But knowing Impact Wrestling, Chelsea will probably take on Deanna at Bound for Glory. If not, if it's not uh, Jordan, uh, Taylor Wilde, it'll be Chelsea Green. I'm willing to put money on that. But Deanna and Ray Wall win. Ray Wall wins with his finisher just like he won with his finisher the first match. So same exact finish for two different matches. Doing a little protecting of Chelsea here. I can dig that. I can understand it. Uh, Decay took on Rachel Ellering and uh, Tommy Dreamer. Both of these teams were involved with involved in comedy matches earlier in the night. So naturally you put these teams together and there's some comedy. And there's more of the bite the face off. This match took forever to start. That was that was the knock I had on this one. It's it's again I, I don't want to see Decay playing grab ass with their opponents, you know. This match took forever to start. It was a comedy match, in my opinion at least. And for that reason I just wanted it to be over. Uh, but Decay won the match as they should have. So Decay will go in the finals to take on Cardona and Chelsea Green. X Division Championship match, Josh Alexander and Black Taurus. I don't know why Black Taurus got this title shot because he doesn't beat anybody. Uh, Decay doesn't really beat anybody, but at this point, they look strong tonight. Uh, they've got the Knockouts Tag Team Championships. And I can understand wanting to give Josh Alexander competition, but is someone really competition that doesn't win any matches whatsoever? But this was another great four-star X Division title match. And Josh Alexander delivers every single time. Impact needs to attach the bus to this guy and push on and move forward. And this has got to be your dude. I think Jake something can be one of the top guys in the company. They clearly don't see that because we don't even see him on these shows. But Josh Alexander is that dude. I think he's the dude that has to beat Kenny Omega. I think he will be an instant star. And his name will be all over the place. And he will move merch. And it will be a game changer for Impact and for his career if he's the guy that beats Kenny Omega. And I think they kind of tease that it's going to go that direction when Kenny said, oh, you're the you're the cruiserweight guy, right? X Division. So, uh, really good match. We all knew Josh Alexander was going to win, but it doesn't mean we couldn't enjoy it, and they, they put on the best match of the night. Uh, this probably should have been the main event. I think the X Division title should be main eventing the show. I think it should be main eventing Impact every single week. I think Josh has to put on these kind of matches every week. Against guys like this, against, I mean, again, even though I said Black Tourers didn't earn the match, I want to see guys outside of the norm challenging for the X Division title. It looks like he's going to have a program with Steve Macklin most likely coming up. Macklin said he wants to compete for the X Division championship. So I can dig that because, again, I'm a Macklin guy. So uh, we'll see. we'll see if that's what it turns into down the road. Now, the uh, finals of this thing was Decay versus Deanna and Matthew Raywalt. This was the second best outcome for me. I, I wanted to see, again, Cardona and Chelsea in the finals, but this was the this was the second best option, and this is what I thought was ultimately going to happen. I mean, if you're looking at the brackets, and this is why seeding matters, but if you're looking at the brackets the way they were laid out, it was pretty clear that this was what we were going to get. Uh, the match was pretty solid, but again, there was more of the bite his face off. I just don't understand why that's funny or what 
what the origin of that is. I just don't want to see that from Decay. Again, look up old Decay stuff. This team is so different right now. And I like the current Decay. I like the, the four-person group. I like Black Taurus being in it. I like Havoc being in it. But I think they have to channel a little more of that dark side and not get into comedy work. But this was the right place for Decay because Rosemary is a Knockouts Tag Team Champion. Deanna Prazo is... The knockouts champion and that's probably why they seeded it this way i'm gonna assume that was the thinking here and this is the logical way of doing the show so uh diana and matthew raywall win this thing with diana gets the pin this time so it wasn't matthew raywall hitting his finisher again diana gets the win and um good show good tournament fun stuff the crowd had a blast and that's what ultimately matters. Even though I don't really care for the Legion of Doom shit and uh, Missy Hyatt and the Bitus face off, even though I don't care for that stuff, at the end of the day, the crowd having a good time is what ultimately matters because it comes off on television. And now the audience is just like, okay, this looks like a good show. This looks like a fun show. I want to go be involved in that and go be a part of it. When I go to an Impact Plus show or an Impact Wrestling show in general, I should say. So. They just had fun and it really came off. The main event to me dragged things down. Eddie Edwards versus W. Morrissey. It's a hardcore match. I got nothing to say about it. They do nothing for me. Aside from that Kenny Omega, Sammy Callahan match, these hardcore matches do zero for me. And if you are trying to build or some kind of program to where Eddie Edwards faces uh, Kenny Omega at some point, I think we got to get away from the Tommy Dreamer 2.0 stuff. You know, when they repackaged Eddie years ago, they were going a real good direction with him, a little darker. And then they started backing off. It started getting funny. There was Kenny. There's the, you know, he's got the the hair. You know, I, I would like to see, I think that right now is the time to go a different direction with Eddie Edwards and channel his more serious side a little bit. And um, I think the majority of you agree. You know, I just, it, Eddie Edwards is getting kind of stale to me. And I would have preferred the X Division championship match be the main event. But I mean, when you got Black Taurus, who doesn't beat anybody, I guess it makes sense that you can't put it in the main event. But this match is what it was. I was bored. I just wanted it to be over. Now, if you were there for this show, you know that, or this match, you know that the brawl that happened outside happened in conjunction with this match. It wasn't, you know, they, they split it up on impact to where it happened, um, promoting, they were promoting the match by having them brawl outside. I never understood why these guys even started fighting to begin with. I mean, I, loosely, yeah, I kind of, I kind of remember, but I'm just like, why do these guys hate each other so much? I hope that the feud is over. Um, I would actually... This match, I just kind of wish wasn't on here at all. Like, it just it just stood out to me as, like, it just didn't fit. You know, you could have put the mixed tag team match at the end. You could have put the X Division. And that would have just worked. But this, for me, I'm just like, oh, my God, get it over with. But Eddie Edwards wins, so it's a good, it's a good win for him. But I don't think they're trying to create a Tommy Dreamer 2.0. And I don't think that's the direction that's going to ultimately be good for the company. You know? Um, they had some surprises this show you know obviously obviously, Drama King being one of them Missy Hyatt being the other was a big big bomb if it wasn't for Slammiversary they would have officially put the surprise partner thing in the dirt with this show every time they have the little silhouette oh it's going to be a mystery oh my god I mean it is so disappointing 9 times out of 9 Oh Lord, Slammiversary is the only way that they they made it work and they delivered it and it was fun and it made sense and it was a sub, it was shocking, you know. But every other time that they're like, hey, there's you know they keep dangling that carrot like we're gonna get some kind of debut or return or something. And it's just always nonsense. So the whole Missy Hyatt thing, I mean, what a waste, Wa- waste of our time in my opinion. But the fans seemed to like it. They were chanting we want missy and all that good shit so if that's what they want um i guess it was a win so i gave the whole show overall an a minus just i just enjoyed it there was a couple matches i didn't like 
but the ones that I did like really, really made up for it. So there was a couple of the tag team matches I didn't care for, and I didn't care for Eddie and W. Morrissey because you guys know my opinion on hardcore wrestling. It's just dead in my opinion. Uh, but that's what I got for you guys. I'm your boy, BQ. Thanks for checking me out. And um, we'll be back with an episode of The Cool Factor very, very soon. I'll talk to you soon. Peace.